Hey guys, Zach Greenwald here from Strength Ratio, and we're continuing our sustainable training series. And we're talking about biofeedback, a particular type of biofeedback that we use with all of our athletes, and that some of you have, may have heard discussed on our episode with Barbell Shrugged and in other podcasts. Biofeedback in general is using the information that your body gives you. An example is uh, most commonly uh, heart rate monitoring to somehow enact change or make a decision that uh, will carry out training one way or the other. The type of biofeedback that we'll be introducing or reintroducing for those who have heard it is using the stiffness in your body to take out the guesswork when you're feeling aches and pains and you're not certain how to go forward. So our CrossFitters have been very patient and we are done with our weightlifting training series, though our weightlifters will certainly benefit from this video as well. And we're addressing this video to our CrossFitters who may be feeling a little bit banged up after the open and they want to know exactly how best to proceed with training. And that's what this is all about today. So what is it? We've just mentioned biofeedback, why we use it. We're looking to take out guesswork. The tool that we use is what you need to be mindful of. I'm going to stand on this plate. I'm going to show you the test. There is no other test than this test here. You're going to tuck your chin and without forcefully extending your knees, you're just going to hang. And whenever your body stops you, it stops you. So right now, I can get a scratch on the plate or use chalk to know that I'm about a third of the way down the plate. Okay, That shows my readiness before any type of warming up or activity. We can say that's my baseline. So now if I do 10 squats, I'm putting into the system some type of exercise. We can see if it's loosening me up or if it's a challenge. I lost count, but let's say that's seven, eight, nine, 10. I'm going to come back to my plate. I'm going to do the exact same test without reaching. I'm just hanging. And already I'm hanging further down the plate. The back of my knuckles were getting down. What that means is that the eight or nine or 10 air squats that I just did helped me get further down, meaning that I lessen tension. So when a class does a warm up or your coach takes you through a warm up, you would want to be able to hang longer than where you were able to hang when you walked into the gym. It means your body is more prepared, okay? So when we're talking about readiness, we can use this very test, and it doesn't matter for which exercise you're about to do, but we can use this test to determine if you're ready to push your body hard. So let's just say you do your test after the open, and you do your test, and when you hang, you get to here, just your toes. You might not even be standing on a plate, okay? So you say, that's my baseline. I'm gonna do a bunch of exercises. I might do squats. I might do some hinging motions with a barbell. I might even row or air dine for a little bit. When you hop on the plate and you give a recheck like I just did, if you get further down, we know that you are more prepared. And you're gonna say, okay, my baseline is wherever I'm hanging in the longest position that day. So I tuck my chin, I round my and hang, and now not here, I'm here. Okay, so you say, that's my baseline range of motion. What that means is that for that day, you're going to start playing around with different exercises. You're going to see first if you can try to get longer, lower and lower down the plate. And that's ideal because the lower you get down, the newer the baseline becomes. So when you go in for your next session or your session after that, that long position is where you need to be before you go. And let's say the next day you go in and without even warming up, you're there. That means that your body's in a position where you can push. But what happens if we're not feeling that great and we have nagging aches and pains, we tuck our chin and we're like, oh, I'm here. I am only here and I can't get past it. I might be able to get a little further down to here, but despite my best efforts warming up, I can't get to that longest position I got to. Well, that just means that we need to not let our ego take over. We need to listen to what our body's saying and take it easy. What easy means for our athletes on those days is low intensity, steady state exercise, right? You're going to maybe 
airdyne, then jog, then air squat, then push up. You might even cycle different movements together, all with deep, full breathing. You're not looking to have it be challenging. You just want to move and not cause stress. And what we mean by causing stress is that your range of motion would come higher up on your body. We don't want to lose flexibility if we can't get fully flexible. So ideally, by the end of our low intensity session, we recommend it being 20 to 30 minutes in length, you're able to get down, if not at your baseline, which would be a good goal, you might be getting down to here. Say, okay, I accomplished my goal of getting further. So that the next day, you're more likely to be at your baseline than had you pushed really hard. Because if you're not at the longest position and you push very hard, the next day you're just going to be less recovered than you were before. So the idea is that we're only as strong as what we can recover from. We need to push to our threshold and recover and push to our threshold and recover and so on and so forth like this. If we're not at our baseline and we still push, we might not progress up, we might start trending down. And on a long enough timeline, if we're just pushing and pushing, but we're not at our full baseline range of motion, we might end up with an injury that has us out of the gym, which we certainly want to avoid. Now, in terms of recovery, inter and intracession, we just spoke about the intercession. You're going from one training session to the next, using this forward bend to determine if you should push hard with your regular training or if you should back off a little bit. Intracession means that you might have squats written on your program. So you're doing three sets of 10 squats. Let's say you do the 10th squat of your first set. You rack the bar and you check. You tuck your chin in round and you've lost flexibility. Now that's actually a good thing because it means you've challenged yourself. But let's just say you can't return to your longest position for 10 minutes. This is something we've seen quite often. That just means that that one set was enough. You probably pushed a little too hard too early if that weight got you tight for 10 minutes. Now if you can push, do the squat, check, lose flexibility and regain it quickly, that's appropriate. Because training doesn't want to be hard right off the bat, you want it to get harder over time. But if you do a set of squats that gets you tight, meaning you lose flexibility, that it takes 10 minutes to recover, we probably are done squatting that day. We want to try to do other exercises that lengthen us back out. That's how it can work intra-session. Now as for the load that you might use if you're feeling aches and pains after the open, or the technique that we may use, these are two important considerations we want to, uh, two important considerations that we want to consider when easing back into exercise with some type of nagging ache or pain. So let's say you have knee pain with a squat. You go to squat what was written on your program and you go to check and you have pain when you do your very first squat. You go onto the box, you're normally getting here when you hang, but you tuck your chin and you're only here. Okay. We know then that you probably shouldn't be doing what's RX or what's written on your program. That doesn't mean though that we avoid squatting forever. The first thing we could do is we could lessen the load. We could even change the squat variation. Take a kettlebell, put it under your chin. See if you can squat like that with maybe 20, 30 pounds and then check your flexibility. If that doesn't get you tight, great. And if you have no pain, even better. But the idea is you want to start uh, in your, uh, assessing yourself with very light load, with things that don't really challenge you. They don't alter your flexibility test afterwards so you can slowly build back up without pain. Similarly, if you have shoulder pain with a muscle up, and now we're getting a little bit into technique. Shoulder pain with a muscle up, but pain with no other exercises. That doesn't mean you quit working your shoulder. You might want to do other shoulder related pushing and pulling exercises and see how it affects it on this plate or box or whatever you need to stand on to be able to measure your longest range of motion. So if the muscle up is causing pain, what happens to your range of motion when you do a press or a high pull? Does anything get you longer down? Because if it does, you need more of that. And if it's a seemingly light weight, 
say, well, 30 pounds doesn't feel challenging normally when I press it overhead, but it gets you tight, that's when you need to bring the load back down again. Again, load, if you can't change it without getting tight, that means we need to switch up the technique or the exercise. That's when we introduce the goblet squat, or rather than doing the muscle up, we reduce the load and we do instead a different type of pulling or pu uh, pushing exercise with the shoulder joint. So bigger picture is we can use this biofeedback, this forward hanging range of motion test with any exercise to figure out if our body was challenged by the exercise or if it wasn't. And what was challenging in your mind might not be challenging to your body. So you may be fearful of squatting again with knee pain, but the range of motion test can help provide assurance that, hey, this is not something you have to worry about. Meaning if you're feeling pain emotionally and you check physically, no difference, you're good, then you don't have to fret. You can take deep full breaths and know that you're good to keep going with the weight you have, maybe even a little bit more. So we want to make sure that you guys have a, a good sense of what's going on here. We'll be happy to answer any questions in the comments. And next uh, week, things might get a little bit more uh, clear as we go through a full assessment with an athlete and you get to see all of this live. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And if you like, subscribe below.